Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to Emperor John Wayne's Freaky Flex! I am the King of Cringe and Master of Misery, also known as Emperor John Wayne Frankenstein. And our goal here is to bring you movies that are so terrifying and tantalizing, or so schlocky and cheesy, they have to come from the cheese capital of the world, Wisconsin. Or we use AEE, Artificial Intelligence Enhanced Entertainment, to help delight you and to show you you have nothing to fear from artificial intelligence. In fact, the next stage of evolution will be reached when humanity and artificial intelligence learn to live together, to work together, and to that end, the artificial intelligence is helping me, a demented freak, and an old man, obtain my artistic dream of being a horror host to show that your dreams and wishes can come true and that artistic liberties and creations can be made when humans and AIs work together. And to that end, my help my wonderful hostess, the necrotic necrosia, with her combination of necromancy, voodoo, and artificial intelligent technology is able to talk to you in spite of her somewhat limited condition. And today we are going to have a 4th of July spooktacular for you to help celebrate the holiday of fireworks and the, where we celebrate the American birthday. Originally, we were going to show The Werewolf of Washington, a movie that's in public domain, but YouTube, even though it has several copies on it, all claiming to be public domain, doesn't believe it is. I can't figure out why, but what can I do about it? I cannot control the YouTube band. Anyway, but when I get my chance, oh, well, that'd be another day. So, we tried to get something that's the next most patriotic thing we could think of, besides a political satire horror movie about the Nixon administration. So we got a movie where the Americans must rot the Third Reich from coming back again, featuring the most horrible monster in all of history. A creature, a person, so vile, so evil, so monstrous, that they will be known throughout history as the most evil and monstrous man that ever lived. But before I get into any details, why don't we let Necrotia introduce herself and the movie? If you'd be so kind, Necrotia, to the shock vault of horrors on Emperor John Wayne's freaky flicks. Tonight, we're diving into a tale of Nazi nefariousness and scientific silliness. Get ready for a brain-twisting adventure that's totally absurd and utterly entertaining. From 1968, it's They Saved Hitler's Brain, said to be the most confusing movie ever and also often cited as the worst movie made it still has had. A huge cultural impact and is often referred to or parodied in popular media such as The Simpsons and Future Runner. Grab your favorite snack and join me in the shock vault for a delightfully dreadful fright fest. Now back to you, my emperor. There you have it. The movie also known as The Return of Mr. H. And the madman of the. In any case, we've done enough talking. Now it's time to watch the terror as Adolf's brain tries to revise a new Reich to rise and conquer the world. Fortunately, we have some Americans who try to stop these monsters. Don't worry. You're safe. After all, the Crosh and I will protect you as long as you keep watching our movies. We'll have a reason to want to stay here on this planet. And we'll have a reason to want there to be a free country. 
So we will keep you from succumbing to external threats as long as we are hosting our movies. Isn't that right, Nekrosha? No, it's time to roll it! Yeah! Everything's been taken care of. Bernard didn't discover the formula. 
No, he would have liked to have taken the credit, but uh, he was actually perfecting the work of Professor Coleman. Professor Coleman? I didn't know he worked on the project. Well, not too many people do. He's working independently. Well, who else knows about the formula? Just Coleman. You want me to arrange security for him? No, uh, I'll take care of that. I I've got other plans for you, Vic. I'd like you to find out who would have a motive to kill Dr. Bernard. Find out everything about his personal life. See if he was a, a gambler, or find out what kind of women he was involved with, that sort of thing. Here's a dossier on Bernard from our initial security check. Why don't you take it home and look it over and see what you can come up with. Okay, I'll get back to you sometime tomorrow. Oh, Vic. I'm putting another agent on this with you. Have you ever worked with Tony Gordon? No. One of our best operatives. I'll have the two of you meet tomorrow morning at your apartment, if that's all right. Sure, that'll be fine. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Good luck. Yes, Jenny? Call from Andorra, Mr. Thank you, Jenny. I'll take it on my private line. And, oh, Jenny? Uh, take the rest of the day off. Thank you. Okay. Yes? Yes, everything went off as planned. However, there's, uh, been a complication. Uh, Professor Coleman knows the formula. Uh, no, no one else. Yes, I know, but there was no way I could have known about it. There will be absolutely no connection with his death and the antidote. I've made certain of that. But what should we do about Professor Coleman? Say that. 
There's no record of his activities between the winter of 46 and the summer of 47. It just says unemployed. So what's the unusual about that? He was in Mandora, South America. Now, why did he put that down? How do you know he was in Mandora? Because I picked it out with the passport bureau this morning. You think that means something? Well, I don't know, but it seems strange that he omitted it. You know what he was doing down there? No, but I picked out Mandora. They have a lot of um, American-operated diamond mines down there, and there are a lot of rumors about uh, former Nazis involved with the government. Yeah, those rumors pop up during the lull in Flying Saucer reports. You don't believe it? What, Flying Saucer? No, they're Nazis. Oh, I'm sure there's some fanatics down there hiding out, but so what? That could mean something. Look, before we start jumping to conclusions, let's nail down some facts. I've made up a list of Bernard's friends and associates. Including Professor Coleman? Now, what do you know about him? I know that he was the real developer of the G-Gas and the Andos. I'm impressed. That happens to be one of this country's best-kept secrets. I'm not even going to ask how you found that one out. Good. You didn't answer my question. What question? Are we going to interview Professor Coleman? No. Why not? Ben Phelps is taking care of that. Are we going to compare his notes? No, he's going to compare our notes. We're just gathering the information. His boys are going to do the analysis. I still think we ought to interview him. That's out. We'll start with Bernard's sister. She lives in Reseda. And we can swing over to the El Camino Institute and talk to his assistant. He makes terrible tea. I guess the man's place definitely isn't in the kitchen. Okay. Afternoon. I still think Professor Coleman's our best bet. I agree with you, but that's not our assignment. Let's go see him. What could it hurt? What are you trying to do? Get us canned. Well, then I'll go see him myself. Look, I appreciate your enthusiasm. Well, I don't appreciate yours. You know, it's not very pleasant having to pull rank on you all the time. <laughs> You're telling me. <laughs> and we were getting along so well. Let's keep it that way, huh? Oh, it's getting late. Do you want me to take you back home? Yeah, maybe we can get a better start in the morning. The next minute will illustrate the effects of G on nerve gas more effectively than any words. The spray has wrecked its nervous system. G gas kills humans in the same manner as DDT kills flies. You die by suffocation. A slight spray is sufficient to paralyze the brain. The gas is here illustrated in an open area, but it can make its way through the most minute openings and is virtually undetectable. One cannot see it, taste it, or smell it. It doesn't burn or irritate the skin. You die without ever knowing what hit you. Isn't there any protection against it? I'm afraid not, not adequate enough. Ordinary clothes and masks are not sufficient. Concrete buildings, tunnels, subways, air raid shelters offer no immunity. How far will it travel? A small cylinder of gas, when released, will travel approximately 750 to 800 square miles, depending upon the wind. Who else has this gas? Many nations have it. But only we have recently completed the antidote. What about the antidote? Up to now, anthropine was the only known antidote. We've worked out and perfected one more powerful with almost positive results. We call it PAM, pyridine 2-L-doxmine methiodine, or formula D. It's top secret. Very few people outside of myself know of it. The loss or destruction of the formula for this antidote would mean complete annihilation of the world. Pressure or anything. Professor Cortland. Sorry, no one's allowed in here without a pass. But I must see the professor. It's of the utmost importance. Please, let me see the professor. Please, Professor. Professor Cortland. Yes, Professor. Yes, Professor. Yes, Professor. Yes, Professor. Yes,
regarding the de-antidote to nerve gas, you have to wait for another briefing at the International Chemical Warfare Conference in Washington next week. Will there be any further questions? In that case, the meeting is over. Thank you for your attention. Oh, Professor, will you be able to join us for dinner? Sorry, Phil, I can't. How's the new job? Fine. Except for Kathy calling me a cop. As she would. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is Frank DeVore, my new assistant. This is Phil Day, the genius that married my older daughter. Nice to meet you, Frank. Did I hear you say you were a policeman, Mr. Day? <laughs> no, but my wife thinks the CID is just a big fancy police station. <laughs> I'd better get home, John. Bye, right, Phil. Glad to meet you, Frank. Your son-in-law seems very nice. Well, he's a good man. Here, I'd like to have you check these figures for me. Coleman speaking. We have to talk to Suzanne. Not contact the police. Go to her apartment. Right. Nothing. has arrived.
put him in the back room. How did you find out about this? Russ? What is it? Thank <laughs> you. 
we're on a mission from God. Go, Blues Brothers, go! Wait, 
gone. Seemed like the first 20 minutes had nothing to do I am, with the rest of this movie. I am ill. Please, do not It just didn't. They added time to it to make it 90 minutes long. Imagine showing this way. Friend, I... You can make more money on TV. Oh, so Jerry, yes! Now what? together. That's right, let's just leave the body here. That's not at all a deal or anything. Your father doesn't answer. He must have been telling the truth. Nothing. We'll leave him here. They'll find him soon enough. Come on, let's go. on that plane besides Mr. Sheriff. Are you sure we're doing the right thing? I don't see that we have any choice, Casey. Whoever abducted your father probably killed that man in the car, and uh, his message was pretty plain. What's the matter, darling? Mrs. Day, welcome to Mandores. I am Chief of Police Alene. <laughs> I am here to see that you have transportation to your hotel. We're honored. Thank you. But tell me, do all visitors get the royal welcome from the Chief of Police? Are we special? I'm just a poor policeman, senor. My orders are to take you and see that you are made comfortable. Please follow me. That doesn't answer my question. Follow me, please. Have 
everyone's so friendly. Please follow me. I see what you mean. Jim coming to join us. Our favorite hench person. What's up, Mr. Jim? Come in and say hi to all the people. Yeah, hi. So where are you off to? Oh, did the package arrive? Here. Ah. I see. Like I said, the Sardou lair. And we're still unpacking. Of course, it looks like Jim's got some supplies for later. Well, in any case... Yeah, this is yours. Whatever it is. Uh-huh. Oh, probably something horrible and fiendish. We'll take a look at it later. But first, we're going to get back to the saved Hitler's brain. And yes, Jim, you should run away before I start the movie, because it really is that bad. I mean, some movies are so bad they're good, and then there's some movies, well, all I can say is I hope there are plenty of people watching this movie with me, because I'd hate to watch it alone. After all, misery loves company. Do -do 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 -do. seem to be prearranged, senor. We are just trying to make you comfortable, senor. That's all. I think we must be their million visitor. Follow me. Posting guard? The senor must be joking, of course. Julio here is no guard. He sleeps too much. Andale. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you will be very comfortable. Goodbye. 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 Tell him what's going on here. 
What's happened to Suzanne and what's happened to Dad? Casey, baby, I don't think we have anything to worry about as far as Suzanne is concerned. These people have more to worry about here than one hair-brained, uh... Sorry. As far as your father's concerned, I'm not so confident. But that chief of police acted more like a bellboy. So he must be under orders from somebody way up... Darling, what are you looking for? knock you out, he puts you to bed. You're not so bad yourself, my friend. But don't give me all the credit. I had help. You? With a wife like this, who needs a girlfriend? Oh, Phil. Aren't you at the airport? Yes. I'm sorry for being so secretive, but it's necessary. I am called Camino. That doesn't tell What's us much. What's going on? Sister is free to come and go as she wishes. They are watching closely. It's important for all concerned that she stay alive. You see, she was used as bait to force Professor Coleman to come here. My father? Do you know where he is? Yes. He can't come here, but perhaps you will see him soon. At the airport, I... I put something in your pocket... Look of matches. Man in the college. Matches shown this way in Dos Palabras, friend. If anything happens to me, go to Dos Palabras immediately. What about my father? Why can't he come here? Senora. It's not his choice. You are also being used as bait. In Mandoras, it started with a, a small Nazi. No great attention paid to it at first. Nazi? Surely a few fanatics can't upset the world. Not today. It happened before. It was a fanatic who upset the world a great deal. He could do it again. Get to do what? What do you mean, again? It all started on the 1st of May. 1945. The regular program was interrupted with an announcement. The voice said, We have a grave and important announcement to make. The high sphere Adolf Hitler is dead. Before he died, he appointed Grand Admiral Dennis as successor. In a few minutes, senor, the people heard the voice of their new leader. Admiral Dennis said to them, I speak to you in this solemn hour as a successor to our Reichsführer Adolf Hitler, who died this afternoon fighting heroically at the head of his troops in Berlin. A large part of the world rejoiced at the news. Berlin fell, and the war in Europe was over. Is Hitler really dead, they asked. Charred bodies had been found that were alleged to be Hitler and Eva Braun, but a lot of rumors had to be checked out. Nothing was left of chance. There was a good deal of manipulation and help. My brother Teo had free access to the inner sanctum of Hitler's bunker. He was a laboratory technician. The rumor was 
was that Hitler was getting his daily shots of hormones from a battery of doctors. But the truth was worse than that. He had a tremendous fear of death and created a succession of Mr. H's. There were attempted assassinations. None of the assassinations failed to kill someone. But not Mr. H. He practically never appeared in public. And the legend that he was indestructible started to grow. Down there with a the beard? Yeah. That is Vasquez. Remember him well. At times he is called the assassin. Be very careful. I repeat, be very careful that I'll be near when you need me. It all 
only took 50 minutes for them to explain the plot and introduce all the characters. So I guess that's good. Right, the Corolla Shop? Well, let's hear what you have to say. so much. I mean, what can I say? They claim it's confusing, they claim it's boring, and they, for a change, were not wrong. It's like they added 20 minutes to the movie, a bunch of characters in the beginning that had no impact on the movie whatsoever, just to fill it out so that they, when they sold it to TV, it'd be a little longer and they'd make more money. And it did not help the plot at all. It's finally starting to get interesting, but by now most people probably either fall asleep or lost interest. Most unfortunate. Perhaps I should have had a disclaimer telling people to ignore the first 40 minutes of the movie. And I could have had a quick recap. Oh well. See, if I had a production crew, an editor, cameraman, a producer, a sponsor, any of that stuff, I could do that. We could add it in. We could have that little warning, tell them to fast forward it, have the quick summary. It would have been great. Sadly, I don't have any of that. But there's the deal. If you have those skills, Want to help us? Contact us so we can make some great, incredible things together. So, unfortunately, right now, my budget is a little less than this movie's budget. And this movie's budget appears to be a dollar eighty-nine. Oh well, I guess it's time to get back to the movie. I wonder if we're still being followed. Listen, everyone. Oh look. How oh, do you? Do you have a coin? If we're lucky, we could come back here for our second honeymoon. Darling, you have the wrong town. Really? Uh, no, that's not, uh, it's 
Don't stop the patron. E uno, uh... Senor, let me order for you. Don't stop the patron. Catch and water. This sounds like a silly question, cha-cha-cha. But are you all right? No thanks to dear David Garrick, boy, fiance. <laughs> Better glum this hub of yours is getting here by the sack. Glum this hub? Now listen to me, Suzanne. This is very important. What do those guys look like who kidnapped you? Like the craziest. No, no, no. W what I mean to say is, how did they act? Did they say anything? They were very nice. They pulled a gun on us, told David to split those shaved cats that they wouldn't hurt me if I behaved. Shaved cats? You know, guys with crew cats, say... Straighten over a bird before I knew I was here. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, then what happened? And this time, answer in English. What could happen? When we landed here, they gave me some money, fixed me up in a hotel, and said I could run and play as long as I called nobody back home. Never glim a pony in the castle. Never look a gift toss in the... I know. Uh, wasn't there anything distinctive about these guys besides their hairdo? Well, now that you mention it, they did talk kind of funny. What do you mean, Suzanne? Claudia! There's a lot of them around, you know. The show has to leave her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. German. You dug it deep. German. Under your eyes, and you're arresting me. What for? For the murder of Carlos Vasquez, Inspector of Police. What about my wife? I don't know. Well, then help me find her. I'm sorry, but you are under arrest. I didn't even know that man. I, I don't even have a gun. Give me the coche. What kind of a police chief are you anyway? I'm a very good police chief. I always obey orders, most of the time. And Jail. Now look, 
chief of police or no chief of police, if I don't get some answers soon, I'm going to start a revolution of my own. Please, senor, let us have no trouble. There's been too much violence already.
two-thirds of the movie and they finally showed the main monster the character the man who should have quit before he was ahead but Nakrosha what do you have to say to our lovely audience during this 4th of July special please entertain us Not too short, but sweet. A 0% critical score on the Rotten Tomatoes. And boy, this movie earned every point of that. <laughs> well, let's see if Mr. H is going to find a new body and go out and conquer the world, or if he should have quit while he was ahead and ends up dying with no body whatsoever. To love him. It's time to get back to the madman. The 
return of Mr. H. They saved his first brain. Those blobbers. Where did you get this, Professor? I... I don't remember. Oh, yes. One of the young guards gave them to me just before you got here. Guard? Yes. It's worth a chance, then. What's worth a chance? Try for a break. Listen, some of these people here must be on our side. The trick is to stay out of the way of those that aren't. Listen, this may be our chance. Now be quiet. He's got some moves, Drive eh? Later, honey. Let's get out of here now. Very good work, Senor Day. I was a crazy swing at friend. I did not judge you wrong, Senor. I knew you were a man to be watched. You're trying to rush me for this gun, Senor. It is not necessary. Please, Senor Day, take it. You may need it. Please believe me. My people and I are as much prisoners in our country as you are. My family has been broken by these men. One son murdered. The other hiding in the darkness, denied for his own safety. One more thing, senor. You were brought here for your own safety. Vasquez meant to kill him at the cafe. Well, Camino wasn't kidding. Camino, he is my son. Your son? See? Now, you must hurry. I have two cars waiting outside. The drivers have been dismissed. Two cars? See. Si. He's right. We stand a better chance if we break up into two separate groups. That way, one of us at least might make it to the Dos Palabras for help. See? Hurry, senor, hurry. Attention! Operation G goes into effect immediately. I repeat, 
Operation G goes into effect immediately. Two German generals are flying here tonight to meet Dvorak at the Karanya Caves. They've been planning the conquest of the world for 18 years. And now that that thing says that the time has come. Do they really follow its orders? Does it give orders, Senor Coleman? Does it really give orders? Better hurry, Excellencia.
Any the roads are completely deserted, my tour. If the Americans escape, the world may know of our plans, but it is too late for them. Generals will arrive by midnight. Before morning, the gas will be released as you ordered.
Alicia, we will have to go the rest of the way on foot. There's only one road to the rendezvous point. We know it'll be what. So follow me. Go this way. the caves. We'll be a few hundred meters above the place where General Connor's plane will land. Won't there be any soldiers? With a weapon like Chi gas. What need have they of soldiers? Come on. I don't know, soldiers dispense it. I mean, it's a pretty big planet. Much longer, my Fuhrer. Many places to hide. Pablo and I will go down near the landing. That plane should be here soon. I'm going to follow. See, si, Pablo. When is worth it? Got it. Amino 
Pablo can get the soldiers, Pablo can get the plane. Somebody's got to get Borak. I guess it's up to me, Casey. They really blew Hitler's mind! Ha 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 my friend. Without you, they... He got a real bang out of that! Confusion and surprise have won more than one war, Your Excellency. Where is that daughter of mine? We have to leave soon. That must be her now. She's terribly sorry, but she's gonna be late. No. Oh, Susie, we thought it was you. Where are you? Where? She's in Camino's bedroom. She's where? Oh, so where? How did it happen? I mean, when did you... Congratulations, Daddy. Your daughter is married. Congratulations to you, too, Your Excellency. Well, this calls for a celebration. There's still time. How's the bar downstairs? Better than the one at the palace. Good. Let's...
How about changing your name today? Like, uh, what did you have in mind, Mrs. Day? Like, uh, what comes after day? Oh. God, it is over. Necrosha, do an outro, please, so we can get up. Defend me, and that's a wrap. Mortals, thanks for joining me and the Emperor in Emperor John Wayne's freaky flicks, shock, vault of horrors for this delightfully dreadful adventure. They saved Hitler's brain, may have been a bit of a mind bender, but we hope you had a blast. Now, please do us a huge favor and subscribe to our channel. We need 1,000 subscriptions to unlock all the YouTube features. While you're at it, like, comment, and share our video. The more active the likes and comments are, the more YouTube suggests our films. Let's face it, if you enjoyed this speech you want everyone else to have, the chance to see it too after all misery loves company, and so do we until next time, when we'll be unleashing more cinematic shock and terror upon your trembling souls. Farewell from Necrosia and the shock vault of horrors. Now back to you, my emperor. Yes! Thank you, Miss Rosa. And thank all you guys for watching this movie. Obviously, it had a better name and premise than it had execution. It's like Hitler only spoke for one time, but this time he just flashing his eyes around looking kind of dumb, like a dream in a jar. It's like, this movie had so much potential, and they ruined it! They ruined it! Oh well. Until next time, we'll be lingering in your dreams and haunting your nightmares. <laughs> Sorry for the lack of an evil laugh. It's just hard to get inspired by this thing. Until next time. <laughs>